This teardown and tire change video isn't a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide, but rather my process and discoveries along the way, plus some mods I made to the wheel. The tire change riding review video was broken out into its separate video, so check it out here. I was scared that wasn't going to fit. Rightio, ready for another tyre change. So just tidied up the area. Going to be setting out left and right hand side parts uh, as I go. Help keep everything organised. So I got the Michelin Pilot Street 2 here, which is the same that I've been using on the V11 for uh, quite a few months and many thousands of kilometers and of course I've got a video on the V11 as well uh, so I'm just going to be following this video guide and the problem I'm going to have is my velcro is covering up the screws so once I rip off the power pads uh, my velcro is covering up the, the screws so I might just cut around there and that way I, I don't want to rip it off every time all right, should be good. I don't have any rain protection on the wheel, so we'll see if it holds up with a bit of water. Alrighty, first look. I haven't done any waterproofing to this and I've been in the rain, so let's see what it looks like. So there's no rubber gasket. Um, but I don't see much dust or any signs of water ingress, so that's great. So we're gonna disconnect the battery cables and terminate the ends so that it doesn't create a short. Just like that. And then we turn it on to deplete capacitors. There we go. So there's lock side on all of these bolts and they're nice and firm for me. Right here, so I just removed the battery pack and let's have a look at the suspension. I mean, there's not really any signs of rubbing that I can see. It's inside the shell here that some people have been reporting issues, but it's pretty minor for me. Right here, so I just took out these four bolts on the other side. And now this top unit can slide slide out. So there's pins here so it slides up this way and then that allows us to get into these bolts here um, which will pop this off and give us access to the tire. Alrighty, as you get to the point of taking the tire off, it's taken about an hour and ten minutes um, plus the filling around with the velcro and filming. Two point five, two point seven five, that's fourteen in a tube. The rim seemed to be in good condition, although I had no reason to suspect it'd been dinged, but there was a small patch of paintwork missing. The mud guard is catching a lot of the crap and seems to be holding up well. Right here, since I got the wheel in pieces, I'm gonna be uh, just inspecting it for water tightness. Uh, cleaning it up and maybe siliconing the motherboard housing at the minimum and putting Loctite on all the bolts. All right, so back for reassembly. The trick to fitting a new tire is soapy water and a good tire lever, plus elbow grease. I can already see it's going to be a tight fit, uh, measuring 14 and 3 quarter inches.
Oh, there we go. I didn't want to have to use a tire lever, but I couldn't work it on my hand. I was scared that wasn't going to fit. Now be really careful here not to pinch the tire. Yes. Now I just get the valve centered and uh, pump it up and leave it for a few hours to make sure we haven't got a flat. So I'm having a bit of trouble getting this bit up over the bead. So I've deflated, added some uh, soapy water and I'm gonna reinflate now. So the spot is, see the line here, it dives down. Uh, it's decreasing. And I don't have a pressure gauge at the moment, so I don't wanna go too hard, but it seems to be slowly setting with that dish soap there. So I might just leave it for a bit. Right, I finally got this bead set here. I have to use the ratchet strap technique, um, pump the shit out of it, which is really hard because I've only got this, and then uh, soapy water. And then I was kneading, like twisting the tire out like this with tons of pressure and it's finally settled in position now. That was the hardest bit so far. So about two hours, two hours 40 to get to this stage. All right, so I was trying to lift this and I can feel that there's resistance and then looking closer, I can see there is some silicone around here. So I don't really want to crack it open. Um, so I'm just going to reapply some Loctite and screw these back in. Surprisingly, some of them had Loctite and others didn't. I think that's a bit weird. So this little bolt just fell out of the chassis as I was moving it. Uh, that's for the mud guard. So I'm gonna have to undo this and uh, stick it back on. Uh, yeah, I don't wanna leave that off the mud guard. So I'm checking the tire pressure and still about 30 where I left it. So that means there's no pinch punctures, which is great. We can get on with the reassembly. One annoying thing that happened was that the tire isn't centered between the two shells. It's far closer to the left side than the right. I was speaking to one other Sherman S owner and they had the same thing happen to them. Figured it's best to loosen all the bolts, twist the tire in the opposite direction and then re-tighten. I haven't gotten to it yet and it doesn't seem to have adversely affected the wheel or the handling. So there's just one area I'm concerned about is the water ingress at the buttons. And having a look underneath, uh, it's pretty well sealed with these rubber gaskets. Since I got this off, I'm just gonna silicone around. There is a rubber gasket on there, but it's not super tight. And if you keep the rubber flat closed on the, the charge spots, it should be all right. But seeing as I ride in quite heavy rain, and if that charge cover comes off, then we're gonna want some silicone around there. Test power on, fingers crossed. Perfect. Oh, let's have a look at um, what we're on for the total mileage here. 831 kilometers. Great. Wow, the agility is so huge. I can feel it right away. It's like the V11. Um, but yeah, definitely got to get that tire seated. The wobbles are horrendous at any speed. And I'm just going real slow because I got the pads off because I'm going to be trying to change the tire at the gas station. Uh, we'll reseat the bead, so best of luck with that. There we go, I think I got it. Uh, where's the problem area? Can't even see it now but lots of soap and then 50 PSI on the machine and it went up to 64 um, and I was kneading it with my hands like this, like twisting out to pull the bead out. Oh, and that looks like it's finally set, thank goodness. I just 
just finished fitting the street tire to the Sherman S. Now it's about as difficult as the Inmotion V11, but the bead is a bit harder to set the the tire on. So I also did the siliconing around the shell and the, the motherboard. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll get those videos out to you guys and uh, have a good one. If you're on the fence about a street tire for the Sherman S, just do it. I'm stoked. I've got this one on. I uh, just got back from the maiden voyage. Mm -hmm.